Lakers coming to town with the best record in the West. You guys are number two in the East and still undefeated at home. Mm. It's going to be a Friday night in Miami. What do you think the buzz is going to be like for this game? It's going to be rocking. Uh, I forgot um, they have a guy on their team that used to play here. Um, so What's his name again? What is his name? I don't, you know what? It's hard uh, to remember. I know they have Anthony Davis. So yes. They have him too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's going it's to be a good one. It's going to be a, a nice show to be at. You and LeBron James, that's the guy, yes, that's him. always go into battle when you play each other. You face each other 33 times. You actually have a slight edge, 18 wins to his 17 wins. What is it that you relish so much about going up against him? Man, I mean, when you're talking about greatness and a guy that just does everything so well and that has won um, on every level, I just like the competition. Um, I think there's a mutual respect between us. But with that being said, I think he's won more when it's really mattered against me. So um, when push comes to shove, I think he's got the edge. All right, but what does that just do in terms of you and your I mean, want to? Exactly. You already, you know, it, the fact that you have to <laughs> ask that question knowing that you already know the answer. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have anything to prove. But I mean, just when you're talking about competing at the highest level, that's an individual that he always competes at the highest level. So you got you to gotta go up against the best and beat the best to be the best. It has been, I mean, it's gotten heated between the two of you. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's what happens when you have two fierce competitors out there that love the game, um, that have fun, and that don't like to lose. Um, I look forward to it. I'm excited. Can't wait. Can't get here soon enough. You've only been in Miami for a few months, but the word keeps surfacing fit. That the fit between you as a player and this organization and team, everyone you talk to says it just fits. Why? Why? Probably because I smile a lot more and I'm happy. Uh, that, that could be it. But when you're talking about an organization that you have to work in order to survive here, um, every single day, every second of every day, everything that you do is championship caliber. And it's to the end goal of winning a championship. And everybody's built like that here, from the Coach Pat, Spo, all of our guys. Uh, that, that's me. Like that, that, that's what I need. That's what I've always been. So I guess it is a great fit. You and Dwayne Wade are so tight. Did mm -hmm. he give you any sort of secrets or keys to the franchise before you came down here? Did he tell you where Pat Riley keeps his secret wine stash? Did I you wish. get anything? I wish, it was, I wish it was that easy. He just <laughs> told me how he could see me being a part of the organization and a part of the culture. I think that's a, a word that everybody right. uses here. And it, it's real, it's true. Mm -hmm. um, because the way that I work, and I pride myself on that, the way that D-Wade does. You know, a lot of people work as well, but um, a lot of people don't work the way that they want you to work here or that you have to work here in order to get by. Um, I love it, we love it, and um, we, we do it every day. We're, that's, that's the only way we know how. I feel like at your previous stops, not all of them, some of them, how some of your teammates worked or didn't work or the time they put in was a big issue for you. Uh, it could have been, but I don't. I don't think that it was just that. It's here. You can tell people like the truth, and it's it's nothing personal. It it, it never is that. It's just yo. I want to win. I want you to want to win. So we get over it. And you know, some people don't. Okay, cool. Boom. That's behind me. It's back there somewhere. I'm here, and I, I'm loving it. You can talk to everybody. Everybody works. Um, and the, and the best thing about it is, Coach Pat was just like, you get to be you, be who you are. Coach Bo, be you. And so I'm just out there being me. It strikes me the difference because the last time you and I sat across from each other doing one of these interviews, it was about a year ago in Minnesota. I believe it was the day you basically burned the practice facility down. I did not. I did not. <laughs> can, can you tell me just how much things have changed for you from there to here? Man, it doesn't snow outside. That's the only change? That's the only change. Oh, okay. Just and the checking. color of my jersey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, when you're talking about, um, you know, the word culture has to come up. Um, obviously, different teammates, different coaches, yada, yada, yada. But um, I'm smiling. I'm happy. Um, I'm where I want to be. Uh, I got to pick, you know, for AC, I got to pick where I wanted to play basketball. Um, it, I don't know. I'm just happy. Obviously, we're winning, so it's all good. But I, I think that this is this is the place for me, which is why I chose here. I wouldn't choose nowhere that I, I wouldn't want to be at. So, I mean, I, with so many things that I could possibly say, I think the biggest is that I'm happy and that we're winning. 
and nobody thought we would do it, but hey, we're here. As you and I sit here, Miami is number two in the Eastern Conference. No Miami team has ever gotten off to this good a start. Not the LeBron James, Dwayne Wade teams, not the Shaq teams, not the Alonzo Mourning teams. I know you thought you guys were going to compete this year, but mm -hmm. be honest, did you really think this team was that good? And you're really going to ask me if yes. I really think a team that I'm on is that good. <laughs> Number two in the East. You yeah. thought you thought you would be in that level. I'm surprised we're not number one, to tell you the truth. When we get to where we're supposed to be, where Spo has this, Coach Pro, Coach mm -hmm. Spo has this, and, and Coach Pat, um, we're gonna be even better. I believe that we got guys that work, that study the game. Um, inside this building, nobody's surprised. Everybody has so much confidence in themselves and in everybody on this roster. It's, it's not a surprise to us. We, we talked about this in the summertime. We've talked about this in training camp. We talked about this yesterday, today. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, we know how good we can be. And we're not comparing ourselves to any other team. We're, we, we will <laughs> never do that. But we're, we can play some basketball. Well, I think when you got here, people said, oh, this is a playoff team now. The, the game has changed down here in Miami from what it had been the previous few years. But do you think that this Miami team, as it's constructed now, can come out of the Eastern Conference and into the NBA Finals, or do you think you guys need another piece? Why not? I don't, I don't see why we can't. As long as we play hard, um, if we make shots, for sure. But we got to uh, be able to say that our defense is our anchor. And we're not where we want to be yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is just a, a sample size of everything. We got a lot more games to go. But I think we're happy with where we're at. Now, we don't want to be where we're at, but we're happy with it. We're winning. Um, but I think that as the season goes on, we're going to continually get better because we work at it. We work at it. We want to be better. And we want to show everybody, like, y'all were surprised. But us, nah. You heard a lot of criticism when you did make that choice and agreed to come to Miami. Good. What bothered you the most? None of it. What burned at you that you thought wasn't true? Uh, I mean, come on now. I hear, I hear it all okay. about who I am as a person, who I am as a player, as a teammate, yada, yada, yada. Um, whatever. I know who I am. I know what I'm capable of. And uh, all I'm focused in on is winning. I don't care about too much or nothing else. Here, it's, it's all about the group that we have. If you're in this organization, if you're with this organization, you're with us. You're in it. If you're not, get out of here. <laughs> and and we, we, we live by it. We don't care about the, the outside because y'all don't know what really goes on in here. But what goes in here is not for everybody. But do you know who it is for? It's for me, so I'm, I'm happy. Keep, keep talking. Uh, it's just background noise. I looked some of it up before this wow. conversation because I was Let's curious. Let's go. There was a lot of, oh, well, then he clearly doesn't care about winning yeah, if he's going down to six? Miami. Hmm. What did you think when you heard that at the time? Uh, I know what I'm capable of. My thing is, like, people act like I'm not a good basketball player. Like, I can't give guys confidence. Like, I can't help guys get better. Um, so that just by you coming down here, it could become more of a winning team? Yeah, without a doubt. I'm not going to say I'm the best player in the world. I'm not going to say I'm not the best player in the world. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, when you got guys on a roster that work like my guys work, like mm -hmm. the guys here work, anything is possible. Like, I'm, I'm telling these guys work so hard, and they're young, and they're professional with it, um, that you're, you're, you're setting that seed, you're planting that seed early. So. They can only get better, and they're learning, and they're gaining confidence because they're playing so well. They're playing so well, like, and it's only December. We got a long way to go, but we're gonna keep working because that's what you have to do here. So, with me being here with these guys, mm -hmm. we're special. Houston was also really interested in you this summer. You're from Texas. Mm -hmm. That's a roster that had an MVP in James Harden mm -hmm. at the time. They had Chris Paul. This Miami team at the time on their roster had only one player who'd ever even been to an all-star game, and he'd only been once. Gorn. What made you decide this is the roster that's more attractive for me? Uh, the, the players were more decorated like me. Don't really got much going on. I don't think nobody knew who my name, I didn't know my name early on in my career. Uh, but then I'm looking and I'm watching the way that they go about getting better how they want to be coached, how they, they listen. Uh, and I was like, you know what? 
that that's me whenever I was 2011, 2012, 2013. And I, I know how bad I wanted to win. I know how I wanted to help. So I, I saw a lot of myself in these guys, and it was easy for me to come down here. It's a good point. I hadn't thought about it that way, but it's certainly true. You. you can see a lot of that same fire. I love it, too. Those These guys, my guys, we got some, man, we got some players. We got some players. There were some people who were surprised you went anywhere at all. You had had a lot of success in Philadelphia, especially in the playoffs. You were clearly their closer. You and Joel Embiid had such a good relationship. Joel told me at training camp this year that he told everyone he wanted you back mm -hmm. on the team. So what happened? A lot of things happened. Uh, a lot of things happened on the, on the inside. So from the outside, you can guess at what was going on, rightfully so. You could try to put the pieces of the puzzle together. But you never really know what happened. But you know, you so that's why I'm asking I you. I do know. <laughs> but then that would make me a snitch if I was to spill all the beans. Like, we can sit here and act like you can ask me the question, like, you know, have ideas of what it could have been. Do you um, want me to give you an idea? Feel free. They did sign someone to a five-year, $180 million contract this summer. It's the richest contract in the history mm -hmm. of the 76ers franchise, and it wasn't you. Did that factor in to all of the decision-making? Oh, no. I knew that that was coming. Okay. Um, especially whenever um, I was like, you know what? I, I like Miami. Like, I, I like our chances down there. They had to, uh, and, and, and a great choice. I, Tobias can play. Yeah. He can, he can play. And I think he fits their system incredibly well. And I'm happy for them. I'm happy for him. Um, and I want them to win a championship as well, just not before us. So, you know, by all means, go for it. What about your development as you get down here? Yes, this is a great fit for you, but what they can add to your game. How close are you to the best version of Jimmy Butler as a player? I'm getting there because I'm learning. Um, I thought I was a pretty good player before I got here, but um, I'm steady getting better, and it's because they're teaching me how to really, really, really be a winner. And that's because of the way that they do things here, the culture here, as I mm -hmm. keep saying. It's, it's all about trying to win a championship. It's not about individual this or individual that, and I've never been yeah. that person. But um, here, they'll let you know, like, we don't, we don't care. <laughs> Yo, get that player that we got here. We're not worried about none of that. And I, I love it. I love it because it keeps us all locked in on keeping the main thing the main thing. Yeah. Win a championship. Joining the Heat, not the only big recent change in your life. Oh. You recently also became a father for the first yeah. time. What has that been like for you? Ah, uh, it's, it's been crazy. A lot of, of nights, up at night, listening to the baby. Uh, <laughs> but it, it just puts everything in perspective for me. Um, and you know, missing the, the home opener, mm -hmm. it was like, um, you really get to find out what's number one now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I got a child that I got to try to make it home to um, every single day, every single night. And that, that, that's all I think about. I love the game of basketball, but knowing that I get to mold an individual is, uh, is even better. Your coach, Eric Spolstra, also just mm -hmm. had a baby. Are you guys doing like a daddy play group on the side or what? What's happening here? I want to, but I feel like he's just always going to talk to me about basketball. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how that's going to go when the kids are crawling around and playing. You could on diagram the plays with Legos or something? Nah. No. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, he's a, he's a big family guy as well. So I get to learn from him about being a father, about being a fierce competitor. Mm -hmm. Like his. It's all in one with Spo, yeah. so it's a, it's, it's a good match. Well, it is a good match in terms of him, because he has a kid. He already had a kid, mm -hmm. so he can kind of talk to you about that balance. He's, uh, he's already doing it. I, somehow, some way, it turns to basketball, but right. it, it, it definitely <laughs> starts, starts with the family. Yeah, starts with some of it that. It definitely does, yeah. All right, so you've played for four teams in the last four years. OK. Are you finally ready to settle down here? Yeah. Do you feel like this is going to be a long-term arrangement? Yep, I'll be here. This is this is it for me. Um, it's a it's a match made in heaven, whatever you want to call it. I'm here to stay as long as Miami wants me here.